Welcome to Under the Night Sky. My name is Robin. Tonight we're going to explore the constellation of Draco the Dragon. I'll talk about how to find the constellation, some of its deep sky objects, and a couple of the myths associated with Draco. By late May, the sun is setting just before 9 o'clock. Look to the north northeast. By 9.30 or 9.45, you might be able to see the stars of Draco above the twilight. But the better observing will start at 10 o'clock when the sky is darker. Draco looks like what we call it, a dragon in the sky. Draco is a circumpolar constellation, meaning because of our latitude of about 40 degrees north, Draco is visible every night of the year. It never sets for us. If you stay out late to observe, you can see Draco moving around Polaris, our North Pole star. Draco makes one complete revolution around Polaris every 24 hours. Draco is huge. It's the eighth largest constellation in the sky. He twists and turns. His tail is between the big and little dippers. Two stars in the dragon's head, his eyes, Rastaban and Altanen, are not far from the bright star Vega in the constellation of Lyra the Harp. If you've been following my Under the Night Sky postings, you're familiar with the Big and Little Dippers and Lyra. You can use them to help you find Draco. Here I have Draco's eyes, the stars Altanen and Rastaban. The parallel lines are satellites passing through this image when it was taken. Altanen is the brightest star in Draco. It's an orange giant about 154 light years away. Altanen is an Arabic word meaning the great serpent. If Altanen and Rastaban were the same distance away, Rastaban would actually shine six times brighter than Altanen. Over time, the positions of many stars change as seen from Earth. In about 1.5 million years, Altanen will pass within 28 light years of Earth. And for time, if its current brightness doesn't change, it will be the brightest star in the night sky, nearly as bright as Sirius, the current bright star in Canis Major. Rastaban is a binary star having a dwarf star companion and is the third brightest star in Draco. Rastaban is also Arabic in origin and means head of the serpent. It's a yellow star about 380 light years from Earth. Now let's look at the star Thuban in the dragon's tail. You can find Thuban by drawing a line from the star Miser, the center star in the Big Dipper's handle, to the bull star Firkud in the Little Dipper. This is Thuban, another Arabic name meaning large snake. Thuban is a white giant star about 300 light years away. Thuban is not particularly bright. It is not bright enough to see if your skies are light polluted, but if you have good seeing conditions with no to very little light pollution, you should be able to see it. Thuban's only claim to fame is that it was the North Pole star some 5,000 years ago when the Egyptians were building pyramids. It was the naked eye star closest to the Earth's North Pole from 4,000 BCE until 1800 BCE. The Earth wobbles as it moves through time and space like a spinning top, which, as it slows, wobbles before it falls. The Earth isn't going to fall, and it takes a long time to make one complete wobble, 26,000 years. This wobble is called precession, and it causes the North Celestial Pole to move counterclockwise relative to the background stars. Whichever star is closest to the North Celestial Pole is the Pole Star. I've marked at the top when Thuban was the Pole Star, and I've marked some of the future Pole Stars. As you can see from this diagram, the Northern Hemisphere has had long stretches when we don't have an easily visible Pole Star. Now, let's move on to some deep sky objects. I've mentioned in previous Under the Night Sky videos that when we talk about deep sky objects in a constellation, we don't necessarily mean that the object is located within the lines 
marking the pattern of the constellation. The object might be within the lines, but it could be outside these lines and within the border of the constellation. The sky is divided into 88 constellation regions. Think of it as equivalent to a state being divided into counties. Every star we see and every deep sky object lies within the border of one of these 88 constellation regions. Here we see the border of Draco. Most of the deep sky objects in Draco lie in the border surrounding the constellation. And Draco has so many interesting deep sky objects. It was hard to choose, but I've selected five to share with you. None of these can be seen with a small telescope or binoculars. The first is NGC 6543, a planetary nebula. Known as the Cat's Eye Nebula, it spans over half a light year across. A light year is the distance light travels in a year, which is about 6 trillion miles. So the Cat's Eye is about 3 trillion miles across. It was among the first planetary nebula ever to be discovered, and it is one of the most complex ever seen. A planetary nebula forms when sun-like stars gently eject their outer gaseous layers during the late stages of stellar evolution. The name planetary nebula is misleading. These objects may appear round and planet-like in small telescopes, but high-resolution images like this one show them to be white dwarf stars, the remnant of the original star, surrounded by shells of glowing gas that can create amazing twisted shapes. This image is a composite of a Hubble Space Telescope image with X-ray light captured by the orbiting Chandra Observatory. The image shows a full pattern of 11 or more concentric rings or shells around the white dwarf star at the center of the image. Each ring is actually the edge of a spherical bubble seen projected into space, which is why it appears bright along its outer edge. Observations suggest that the star ejected its mass in a series of pulses at 1500 year intervals creating this cut in half onion look where each skin layer can be seen. These convulsions created dust shells that each contain as much mass as all the planets in our solar system combined. The complex yet symmetric inner structures are not well understood. The features seen in the cat's eye are so complex, astronomers suspect the bright central object may actually be a binary star. Next, let's look at NGC 5866, an edge-on galaxy. Known as the Spindle Galaxy, it's located 44 million light years from Earth. 5866 is tilted nearly edge-on to our line of sight. We can see a subtle reddish bulge surrounding a bright nucleus at the center of the galaxy. A blue disk of stars running parallel to that dark dust lane and a transparent outer halo. The dust lane is slightly warped compared to the disk of starlight. The warp indicates that the galaxy might have experienced gravitational tidal disturbances in the distant past caused by an interaction with a nearby galaxy. This is very likely since NGC 5866 is the largest member of a small cluster of galaxies. We can see some faint wispy trails of dust wandering away from the disk out into the bulge and inner halo. The outer halo is dotted with numerous globular clusters. These are gravitationally bound clusters of nearly a million stars each. Through the halo, we can also see some background galaxies that are millions to billions of light years farther away than 5866. Next, we'll look at Abel 2218. This is a galaxy cluster containing thousands of individual galaxies about 2 billion light years away. Abel 2218 is a giant cosmic magnifying glass. The cluster is so massive that its gravitational field deflects light rays passing through it, just like an optical lens bends light to form an image. 
This phenomenon is called gravitational lensing. It magnifies, brightens, and distorts images from faraway objects. The cluster's magnifying power provides an incredibly powerful zoom lens for viewing distant galaxies that can't be observed with even the largest telescopes. The lensing produces the arc-shaped patterns we see in this image. The arcs are distorted images of incredibly distant galaxies, lying 5 to 10 times farther away than the April 2218 cluster. More than 50 distant galaxies have been identified. These galaxies existed when the universe was just a quarter of its current age. The gravitational lensing provided by April 2218 is providing astronomers a direct glimpse into the early evolution of galaxies. Now we'll look at ARP 188. Known as the Tadpole Galaxy, this distorted spiral galaxy is about 420 million light years away. Its distorted shape was caused by a very blue, compact galaxy visible in the upper left corner of the tadpole. This intruder is likely a hit and run galaxy, now leaving the scene of the accident. Strong gravitational forces from the interaction created this long tail of debris, consisting of stars, dust, and gas that stretch out more than 280,000 light years. We can see young blue stars and star clusters that were given birth by the collision in the spiral arms and the long tail. Each of these clusters contain very massive stars that are 10 times hotter and a million times brighter than our sun. There are two prominent clumps of bright blue stars in the tail separated by a gap that section fainter than the rest of the tail. These clumps will likely become dwarf galaxies that will orbit the tadpole. And one last thing, look at the space behind the tadpole. There are 6,000 galaxies in this image. Our last deep sky object is NGC 5949. This dwarf galaxy is about 44 million light years away. The galaxy is a bright yet ill-defined pinwheel. It's classified as a dwarf galaxy due to its small number of stars. Its loosely bound spiral arms also place it in the category of barred spirals. Dwarf galaxies like NGC 5949 have posed some interesting problems for astronomers. For example, the distribution of dark matter in dwarfs is quite puzzling. They call it the cuspy halo problem. And simulations of the universe predict that there should be many more dwarf galaxies than we see around us. This is the missing satellites problem. There is so much more to learn about our small neighbors. Let's move on to some mythology. In Roman mythology, Draco was one of the giant titans who warred with the Olympian gods for 10 years. He was killed in battle by the goddess Minerva and thrown into the sky where he froze around the North Pole. The Dakota Lakota people see the stars of Draco as a thunderbird. The wing tips on the bottom wing are in Draco's head. The upper wing includes two of the Little Dipper Bowl stars and Thuban is just to the left of the wing tip. In Belarusian mythology, Saint Yuri kills the serpent and hangs it near the star that always stands in the same place. The ancient Arab nomadic tribes did not see Draco as we see it today. The protecting mother camels is an asterism these ancient people saw in Draco. An asterism is a recognized star pattern that is not one of the official 88 constellations. The asterism is a ring of mother camels the four stars representing Draco's head. They are surrounding a foal, the faint star in the middle of the four mother camels. Another mother camel, the faint star Mu Draconis, is running to join them. The mother camels are protecting the foal from two wolves, the stars Zeta Draconis and Eta Draconis. In Greek mythology, one of the twelve labors of Hercules was to steal the golden apples of Hera. 
Hera had been given the golden apple tree as a wedding present when she married Zeus. She planted it in her garden on the slopes of Mount Atlas and required the Hesperides, daughters of Atlas, to guard it. The Hesperides did not make good guards as they kept stealing the apples for themselves. Hera had to up the protection around her tree, so she placed a dragon named Landon around the tree to protect it. Landon had a hundred heads and could talk in different voices. Now in comes Hercules. The only way he could get the apples was to kill the dragon, and he did, using poison arrows. Saddened by his death, and to honor the great dragon who protected the apples with valor, Hera placed him in the sky as the constellation Draco. That's it for this Under the Night Sky. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed exploring Draco with me. Join me next month when we explore the constellation Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer.